In an earlier lesson, we talked about going from our rough sketches to our dimension sketches. So I've got a rough, I've got a dimension. And what I would like to do then for this lesson is to talk about how we're going to get this side profile onto Inventor as well as our axle holes and our air holes and all of that good stuff. So we'll switch over here to Inventor and again we always want to start with a new standard IPT. If we look back over to my drawing real quick we'll notice that the body of my car is six inches long and an inch tall. So when I start my 2D sketch here I am going to draw a rectangle that is six inches long and one inch tall. Now that I've got that box that's a good guideline for me to get started. Uh, I should fill most of that box up with my drawing. My drawing should touch the edges in multiple places, okay? But before I can do any of that sketching, I want to get all the holes in there. Sometimes it's easier to do before you sketch your profile onto there. So I'm going to finish this sketch. The thickness of the material we have is 3 fourths of an inch. <coughs> so I'm going to extrude that to 3 fourths of an inch. I'm going to start with my axle holes. So I'm going to put a 2D sketch on this face. I'm going to put a couple of center points on it. And I'm going to dimension those into place. We said the minimum was 3 fourths from the front or the back end. I chose to put mine an inch back from the front and an inch from the back also. <coughs> Uh, we did have a dimension that we had to stick with though and that was from the bottom of the part to the center of the axle hole that had to be 3 16 for both of these holes. I have those location uh, now so I'm going to finish my sketch. I'm going to go to hole and I'm going to go ahead, I want this to go through and the diameter was 0.156 on these axle holes. So now my axle holes are in place, I'm going to repeat that process for the air hole. So on the back of my car I put a sketch, I'm going to put a point in here and this point needs to be right in the middle from left to right so that's 0.375, I already locked it into place there. And then from the bottom we said about 0.5 to 0.55. I've actually gone 0.6 on a couple of these. I wouldn't go too far outside of that. Okay. Once that's done, I'm going to finish my sketch and go back to the hole. Okay. Notice right now that the hole is going all the way through. We don't want that, so I need to change it back over to distance. Okay. My maximum distance was 1.75 and that's what I had in my drawing. I do recommend a, a deeper air hole most of the time. And then my diameter was 0.391. Once that's good, there we go. I've got the three holes that I need in the car in there now. At this point, I also like to go to view and visual style and change over to wireframe with hidden edges. I do that so that when I start sketching on this front face I know how to avoid my air hole. Okay? So switching back over here to look at my drawing for a moment you'll notice that I kinda have a nose that tapers up gets skinnier in the middle here and then wider back towards the end. Okay? We're not worried about this outside triangle right now we're only worried about the inch that I included in my rectangle. Okay? So you can kind of see where I'm at. Really the only thing I know is I'm an eighth of an inch tall in the front is where I start. And then everything else is just kind of eyeballing it and making it look right and fitting like it's supposed to. So I will begin by putting a new sketch on this face. And then this is really, really important or it probably won't cut out for you. I want to project the geometry of these four lines of the rectangle that I'd already drawn and then I'm going to draw a new rectangle just trace it right over the top. Okay? 
Now I'm ready to get going. There's more than one way to do this. I'll show you a couple different ways. You can use lines with fillets. You can use arcs. There's all sorts of ways to get this done. What is important though is anytime you draw that if you're trying to lock something into the edge that you make sure it lights up and it's right there on the edge. Okay. I'm going to start with this line and the reason I'm doing this is just because I know that the front of my car was an eighth of an inch tall. So right there I know if I take off from that point that I'm the same as my drawing and that's my goal is to be the same as my drawing. Okay. On my drawing I came up above my wheel to give myself plenty of room for my axle and then I dipped back down behind the wheel before I took off for the rest of the car. Okay, I'm going to stop my line tool there and I'm going to use fillet uh, to round that over. Okay, so my fillet tool is right here. You may have to play with the radius a little bit, but if I click this line and this line, it should round that over. You can do that with a combination of lines or arcs also, so that's kind of up to you to decide how you want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and use an arc here to go part of the way back on the rest of my car. I'm going to bend that down just a little bit. I'm going to make sure I connect to the end point. And on my drawing I kind of bent back up like that a little bit. Always want to make sure that you're getting right on those edges when you do your arcs. And sometimes they'll still give you problems even if you think you did everything right. <laughs> Remember that the minimum body thickness between axles is one fourth of an inch. So I know I've done this on a previous demonstration. I kind of like to leave that in there, that one fourth of an inch line, just as a little bit of a guideline for how narrow I could actually get. And you could put in more than one of these if you wanted. And it's not going to be exact with your curve, but it should give you a pretty good idea of what you can do. So I can see right there that. I can't go any more narrow than that uh, already. So that's that's as thin as I can go there. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take an arc somewhere in here. Back here. And I'm just going to try to take it up to that line. And I think that looks pretty similar to the shape that I drew. So I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Remember we want our inventor drawing to be very similar to whatever you drew on paper. I also had a little arc back here and that is starting to look a lot like what my paper drawing looks like. So now that I have this all outlined and I'm hoping it's all closed in well, I am going to go ahead and try to finish the sketch and extrude it. Again, sometimes this is a real pain and you've got to go back and trace over what you've already done, but we'll hope that doesn't happen to me today. I'm going to switch over to extrude and cut, and I want that part out, and I want that part out, and sometimes you zoom in, and that part out. So it actually worked out for me. Sometimes if it doesn't, you've got to hold your mouse still for a while or go back to your sketch and trace over things like I said. I'm going to change my view up again so you can see that. So there we go. That would be the side profile of the car. Again, if we go back to wireframe with hidden edges and we look, some pretty important things here. The air hole has plenty of room between it and the outside of the car and the axle hole. Okay, All of that looks good. So that would be step one, uh, sketching the side profile of your car into Inventor.